Tenon, Stavos in your yes. bet. Uh, Brad Shepard's injury or his availability for round one? Oh, look, Shep um, obviously hurt himself in the game last week. Um, we've got um, a big training session tomorrow and he was hopeful uh, when I saw him uh, yesterday of being right to get some minutes in tomorrow. So uh, we'll have an assessment later today in terms of training numbers and what we're doing for training, but he's uh, certainly in good spirits. Can you clarify what it was? Did it, was it calf in the end? Oh, he got a bit of a knock, so, um, you know, just takes a little while for those things to settle down sometimes after a game, and we're not going to take any risk with players this week in particular, knowing that round one's still a good 10 days away. Was the main issue the, the knock to the knee area, or was the, the whiplash from the... Oh, that certainly, I mean, the doctors made the assessment on the, the other collision, but um, in terms of his his, um, his sore leg, that was um, obviously fairly uh, inhibiting for him, so we, we made the call to take no risk with any of our players, and on Sunday it was Shep. Would you feel like he's more likely than unlikely yep. around one. Yep. What about um, uh, Josh Kennedy? How's he travelling? So Simo sort of told us he thought he would be and then he told the punters he thought he wouldn't be. Where, where, where do you think he's at as far as going to Brisbane? Uh, yeah, look, he's, um, he's pushing along nicely, um, as we'd hoped uh, from a match committee point of view. Uh, we've got, as I said, a big session tomorrow um, and the plan is that JK is involved in that session. Um, to what extent, we'll find out, I said, later today with our minutes and availability, but um, he trained really well earlier in the week um, and is certainly pushing his case for, for being right for next week. And we'll give him every opportunity, understanding how important he is for us. Um, and we'll make sure that, um, yeah, we give ourselves the best chance to, to make him right and also get ourselves fully prepped for round one. With someone like Josh, even coming off an interrupted preparation like he's had, do you go in with confidence that he can just come in, play first up and deliver for you? Oh, he's a he's a veteran of the game, and he's a you know very uh, a very very good player, uh, and we certainly know what he adds to our group. In saying that, if he's not right, um, we're certainly still very confident that we can get the job done. And uh, our forward line, as you would have seen the last couple of weeks, a um, bit of a different look about it um, without Lacroix and um, Kennedy out there at the moment, and Cripps as well. But um, you know the the speed and the youth that we've got up there has also been an exciting look. So um, on both fronts, so we'll be we'll be confident our forward line will be in, in good shape. Are you enjoying the role change? Uh, yeah, it's been it's been really enjoyable summer, um, and looking forward to uh, the big year ahead. Uh, it's a um, bit of a different role change for me um, in terms that I'm probably working more hands on with players this year and uh, with the midfield in particular. And it's um, it's been one that I really enjoy. I'm I'm blessed that I've got a um, number of uh, senior players in the midfield group that are really keen to help drive this group forward um, and when you're, you're a coach that makes your job a lot easier so it's um, it's been really enjoyable and now we've you know set ourselves up for a, a, hopefully a big season ahead um, and time will tell. Challenge stepping into Sam Mitchell's shoes and well taking over a midfield just on the premiership? Oh it's um it's very exciting I mean I was involved obviously last year with the group uh, in, ter in terms of stoppages and structures and um, my role has changed um, in that regard, but in terms of um, our systems within the coaching group and uh, roles that we play within that, um, it's all very similar. And um, yeah, we're all looking forward to um, you know, big 2019. Nathan, a couple of the midfielders have talked about feeling vulnerable in the centre square setups because of the set positions, the inability to get help in and around. How do you feel when they set up in there and, and you know that if you get it, it's great, but if the opposition gets it, it's very hard to to stop them getting out the front end pretty quickly? Yeah, it's certainly been, um, I mean, it's only a small sample size at the moment with two weeks of footy, but um, it is a different look uh, and one that teams are going to have to, I guess, adjust to on the fly at times in games. And the biggest thing is you're not going to be able to assist um, a centre bounce loss, especially if m momentum is going against you. So what we're seeing is a lot of space, obviously, at centre bounce, um, which can work both ways. Um, so we're just going to have to make sure moving forward that. We give ourselves the best of both looks, that if we lose it, we can still defend behind, and if we win it, uh, we're in a good shape to hopefully keep the ball in our forward half, or if not, get a score. So, um, as I said, it's only been a couple of weeks, but um, yeah, the first week was like a bit of wow, what, this is um, a bit of change, and a bit more adjusting on the weekend. And I dare say in a few weeks' time, um, teams will work out a, a few different strategies to, to try and, I guess, minimise the, um, the different look, and then um, just get about their work from there. You'd be asking for a pay rise after last weekend, wouldn't you? 55, <laughs> 27, 18 to 5, and six goals from stoppages inside your 50. 
Uh, the boys were, were were pretty good last week. Um, the first half was a was a real arm wrestle, um, and then in the in the second half, as I touched on before, you know, our senior group of players, um, and you know, in the midfield group in particular, stood up and and. Um, made the contest count and um, the results spoke for himself after that. So how would you assess the way the Ruckman, Vardy and um, Hickey have served your, your ground level bits at this stage? Yeah look they've been um, been competitive and that's what we what we want. Um, you know we uh, we certainly pride ourselves on, on being good at ground level and understand that week in week out we're gonna get different looks in terms of ruck dominance. Um, but those two are still working through their ruck chemistry and spent a summer together, mostly competing against each other to be honest, um, in a lot of our match drills and now they're starting to find that balance of working with each other and that we're confident that um, you know if we choose to go down that path it's going to be a, um, a healthy look for us. So Hickey in particular, because obviously we've seen Nathan for a couple of years yep. now, um, how, how have you assessed him and, and what are you doing for him, the two jail team matches? Yeah, he's, um, he's adding a bit of a different look um, for us in terms of a ruck perspective and he can cover the ground really well. Um, he competes well at ruck level, his tap work's um, been quite good as well. So we just, again, we're trying to build the chemistry with Nathan and Tom, uh, as well as teaching Tom about our style of play with our rucks and what we expect of them. Um, and hopefully, um, I'm fairly confident they've both got a, I know Nathan does, and Tom's certainly working that space to understand what the role entails. And then from here on in, hopefully um, it's a good combo for us. Do you expect the value of winning Ruckman to go up because of the set positions at, at bounces? Uh, yes and no. Uh, certainly it will help if you're getting some serious ruck dominance at centre bounce um, and it will be hard to combat that but you'd also, I mean there's there's four players essentially in at the centre bounce each time and the three midfielders play an equally important role in, in many aspects so it's going to be important that everyone's on their A game in there and uh, won't just be put solely on the rucks in terms of um, centre bounce win or loss. So. Um, it's going to be on all four players playing their role inside. And in round one against Brisbane, do you expect to go with the two-ruck model that you had in place last year? Still a week away from round one. We haven't had a match committee yet, so we'll have to... Um, as I said, we've got a hit out tomorrow and we'll see how we go, but um, that has been our system in the past, so it looks more likely than unlikely, I'd say. Yeah, and the hit out tomorrow is basically an intra-club practice match. Is that what you're doing? Or? Yeah, we're going to have um, definitely a fair few minutes of just playing footy, um, so we'll... Uh, We'll see what that what the sports science staff will allow us to do later today, um, and move on from there. But I guess the more we can replicate what a, what a game looks like and in prep for round one is going to be best for our players. So the exact minutes of that we'll find out later today. Is there any positions that are up for grabs at that hit out tomorrow? Are there still players you're trying to decide as either him or him when we go to Brisbane? I think there always is heading into round one, to be honest. Um, and as I said, there's been a number of young guys come in the last couple of weeks that have um, played some really strong footy and, and put their hand up to play round one. Um, as, as we've already touched on, too, a number of guys coming back from injury, which is going to put pressure on spots. So I think that's a really healthy issue to have heading into, um, into the season. And that's what you often find um, when you're hopefully in the middle of a, a good time at a footy club is that you've got a lot of pressure on spots um, at senior level um, and hopefully we've got that not only this coming week but in the, the weeks to come throughout the year. Is If Josh Kennedy was a yes for round one, does that mean Oscar Allen's a no or do you feel they could play in the same team? Oh, I guess that's a, yeah, it's a match committee discussion but there, I think Oscar's shown that he can play a number of different positions for us too so that versatility will certainly work in his favour. Having another intra-club tomorrow, um, do you like the way the pre-season is set up? Is, is a two JLT matches enough? Uh, from a coaching point of view, uh, we'd always like to get a few more games in the players. Um, but I know from players' point of view, I think for most of them, the senior boys in particular, two games is probably about right. Um, but I guess you know, coaches always want more time with players to play footy and players just want to play. Um, so the balance is probably about right. Um, and everyone gets the same uh, amount of match practice, so I guess it's an equal playing field in that regard. So you know, it's just about getting into season proper. A few players, including a couple of yours, have said they would like a bit more clarity and less confusion about how the, not so much about the rules themselves, but how they are applied. Are you confident that clarity is going to exist when you play around one? We saw the 50 metre penalty yep. become a bit of a farce in the North Melbourne Port Adelaide game at the weekend. Yeah, look, we've, I mean, throughout pre-season, we've tried to, I guess, 
get the best insight we can into in terms of the interpretation of the new rules that have come in as well as existing rules um, and we quite often have our umpires down at training which help out in that space so um, I'm really confident our players have got clarity on what, what's needed. What are you going to tell your players if they can see the 50 what they are and aren't allowed to do given what we saw in the North Port game? I guess it's what the rule states um, is that you need to be showing intent to get out of the space and make sure you don't impede that player that um, receives the 50 metre penalty, otherwise you'll be penalised accordingly. I guess it's it's got to be a no, in some ways it's got to be a no risk policy because conceding 100 metres is you know, critical in our game. The, the role of the runner now reduced, and there's a lot of talk about empowering the player group. Yep. How well equipped are you, perhaps compared to other teams, you think, to deal with less runner interaction? Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely going to be a, a unique challenge. Um, and one that um, I guess coaches are going to have less input to a certain regard into how many messages and uh, how we deliver our messages on game day, um, as well as the, the complexity of rotations, which um, you know is is a, a different issue for our sports science and um, our staff on the bench. But it's as I touched on before, our um, our senior group of players have been terrific in the past, and I dare say this will be a, another step forward for them in terms of helping be an extension of the coaching group out in, out in the game.